Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I am Petter, and this is James. You are my special. What? What? <laughs> Do you not, uh, <laughs> have you not seen Jujutsu Kaisen, the part two, like the of season two? Oh. At all? The Shib oh, I, arc? I ha you know what? I haven't seen a single episode of season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> my reference is wasted on you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the opening. You are my special. Oh. Do -do 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 -do. Is it a really good song? I think it's good. It's it's catchy. It it, it gets in your head. It's an earworm. <laughs> Sweet. And I think it left people traumatized a few a few times. <laughs> oh really? Huh. I need to see this. Yeah. I guess. I I need to see this season. I know. I I know. I need to. You really do. And I want to as well. Even so, I I don't know what's stopping me. You are my special. <laughs> it's pretty good. Very well. Yes. Uh. That's that is great. But today we're talking about volume 19 of the Jujutsu Kaisen manga, and quick summary of this volume, Yuji reconnected, quote-unquote, with this guy called Rin Amai after having defeated the helicopter head guy. <laughs> then Yuji had his showdown with Higuruma, and ultimately added the new rule that allows players to transfer points between one another. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Megumi was led astray and had to fight Reggie mm -hmm. and his crew alongside the failed comedian Takaba. <laughs> and <laughs> at the very end of the book, we have Megumi and Reggie in the process of literally crushing one another. In a very, very confusing fight. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but I guess without any further ado, let's start with the characters, beginning with Yuji Itadori a bit. Okay. Apparently, he used to be known as the Tiger of West Junior High, a nickname that he is not so uh, happy with. <laughs> I didn't pick that name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess just some other, some extra flashbacks showing that he was always a comparatively good fighter. He was, he's always mm -hmm. been strong, but we knew that. We knew that. Yeah. This is how Amai knew him. Yes. Um... From his middle school days, so uh, not necessarily something I was expecting entirely. I mean, we we knew he knew him somehow, but I I wasn't gonna put it back to his middle school days per se. But mm, mm. you know, the, he kind of disappears after 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 introducing him to Higuruma. It seems like right. So right. I, I don't know. Uh huh. Maybe he'll have something in the next volume, but just. Kind of gone out of, the, out, of, out of the story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be kind of strange if he's out of the story permanently because it seemed like like Akutami was trying to set this guy up as someone at least at least somewhat significant. But so far, this character hasn't really done anything significant other than, I guess, lead Yuji to Higuruma, as you said. But yeah. I feel like there like, should well, be more. I, I, I would have liked more than that. <laughs> Um, well, I fulfilled my purpose. Yeah. Goodbye. I, mean, I, I guess it's not too strange considering, or, I, well, like, Yuji obviously had no recollection of this guy at all. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he and we know he's good at faces. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, obviously, their, their interaction in the past was very, very brief. But yeah, he, he did come face to face with Higuruma, as he mm -hmm. had intended. And something that I thought was... I guess interesting in a way is that when Judgment accused Yuji of the mass murder in Shibuya, mm -hmm. Yuji didn't hesitate to confess. That that yeah. that that in and of itself wasn't necessarily surprising because I know or we know mm, that he yeah. has been struggling with that and well he's been feeling guilty over that. So of course he 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 was still blaming himself for it. Although on that real quick, I mm. I just love his stone cold pl uh, guilty plead. You know. Yeah. No, nothing wavering as soon as he heard it just yep i'm guilty right you know? exactly just dang so it's it is sad to see it kind of delivered in that kind of a way even though it's not surprising exactly mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but um higuruma did call him innocent or he did consider him innocent yeah uh, based on the evidence that he had been provided mm -hmm. um and even though i i didn't I didn't pick up on anything changing in Yuji exactly, necessarily in that moment. 
but I, I do still hope it had a good effect on him. Like, in the long term, maybe he can think back on the fact that this lawyer thought he was innocent in that regard. Oh, okay. So, like, I, like right now, I don't, I don't think anything has necessarily changed in Yuji's way of thinking about it. But hopefully, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking maybe it will further down the line. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, maybe. Maybe. It probably depends on what happens next in the story if mm. Yuji and Hikuruma team up in some way. Maybe mm. he can reinforce that to Yuji that it's not his fault. Oh, yeah. But... Right. I don't know. As you, assuming Higuruma stays in the story. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like uh. he kind of walk. He also walks away at mm. the end. Yeah. So it's like, will we see him again? I don't know. <laughs> but if they do team up, mm-hmm. uh, maybe that could be something. But either Absolutely. way, he certainly is taking it still very hard. Um, ma- taking it, taking major responsibility for those actions. Um, and I guess I can respect that in some way. <laughs> Right. I yeah, I mean I see it. It's just it, like it it doesn't necessarily come from the fact that he thinks of himself as having done it obviously, but rather that he was too weak to prevent it and that's why he's blaming himself and like I get it. If he had been killed like because because it's been established previously in the story or by other characters that he shouldn't be allowed to live the way he is and maybe this mm-hmm. is something that's making him kind of understand that point of view a bit more because it actually like something like like this ended up happening and so in a in a way maybe he feels like he should have listened to those guys that wanted to kill him after having eaten the first finger i think for sure those thoughts came came to mind when he first woke up yeah uh after the the terrible uh, incident mm. um like that was one of the things that were that went through his mind that he should be dead. Yeah. But maybe he'll find peace eventually. Eventually. The way he took out Higuruma without the curse energy, though, I know he, he kind of lifted his curse technique and at, at some point, especially since he found Yuji to be innocent. But I don't know. The way he was able to do all that with, without any curse energy is just, <laughs> what a boss. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, that was very so fun cool. to see. I, I'm sure Maki would wipe the floor with him at this point. Well, maybe I shouldn't say wipe the floor. I, I think Wamaki <laughs> would beat beat him, but I do wonder if Yuji could reach her level mm. at all. It's probably been established, or at least implied, that there are two different identities, if you will. You know, two different cases. Mm. But I am very curious about his inhuman strength in comparison to Maki's. Uh, yeah, same. Definitely, it, because I feel it's still a mystery. Like, I guess we don't know for sure the the, the potential differences between the reasons for right. why each of them are the way they are. Mm-hmm. Other than obviously, it's it's very clear, obviously, that, that Maki's is the same thing as Toji's, but mm-hmm. I guess we don't know exactly with Yuji. Gosh, what was it called? Heavenly, Heavenly Restriction. Yeah, Restriction. Mm. That's it. I was gonna say delusions. Like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I thought it was fun to see Yuji be challenged to a fight of wits, basically, uh, ah. as opposed to. I mean, obviously, it, it became a, a, a fight of of physique uh, yeah. by the end, uh, anyway. But for him to to still be be challenged in that other type of way. I thought was interesting specifically for this character because he obviously hasn't been shown to be the brightest <laughs> guy a lot of the time. Uh, but he, he, I thought he did fine uh, in both of the trials. Or, yeah, or, um, I mean, or I, well, I guess the, the retrial well, ended up as it did. But, uh, but, but the, the fact that he was able to come up with the idea to demand a retrial uh, was not necessarily expected. Yeah, that was a, that was a, pretty quick thinking on on his part and pretty great yeah uh but i feel i felt like the first trial he was almost doomed to failure and i think higuruma says oh you should have said you were guilty or something like that i don't know his explanation didn't really make 
<laughs> entire sense to be right on how he could have got out of it. As like, I, I feel like he, you, the evidence was still incriminating enough that it, it didn't matter. Like, yeah, what? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't seem like he could win at all in that case. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's a very powerful curse technique or domain. But he, but Itadori did the best he could, and. I agree. The retrial was brilliant. Just kind of sucks that judgment went, went straight for the throat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, ultimately he, he came out victorious in a way in the end. And yeah. uh, got the, got got that the added rule. rule. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. So all is good. Uh, at least with Yuji right now. Yeah. <laughs> but anything else on him? No. Then let's move on and talk about Hiromi Higuruma. This guy's crazy, and I love him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I, I loved his introduction in the previous volume as well. But really getting to see him in in this new type of scene or this new type of role, kind of, uh, was was a lot of fun. I thought, like, and, and to learn that within twelve days of awakening to his curse technique. He reached a level comparable to Great One Sorcerer. That's also just insane. Absolutely, dude is a <laughs> genius at whatever he does, whatever he puts his mind to. Right, <laughs> just impressive. Really, and I really like his domain, as I said before. Like it's yes, and it was so fascinating to learn about how those types of domains, or like those, or curse techniques, or whatever, like yep. they were a lot more common back in the day, and like. It seems to imply here that sumo wrestling may have originated as a domain expansion, and I love that. <laughs> That's so fun. Maybe. I, I, it, that could be implied as well, but it, or maybe it's just a great example for it. But uh, I, It could be. That could would be, be cool. <laughs> that would be cool if it was one of those domain expansions at first, or maybe it was inspired by domain mm. expansion. Right, precisely. But it's a very, it's a very interesting one uh, that has a specific set of rules Mm. We have seen domain expansions with, you know, rules that the attack will always hit or things like that. Mm. But nothing, nothing to this extent. And I appreciate the, I guess, freshness of it. Absolutely. I and mean, also how it ties into his background as a lawyer. Precisely. Yeah. And I feel like with these types of domain expansions, there could be so many more unique and fun ones. Yeah, uh, and I I really hope we'll get to see a lot more stuff like that in the future, uh, mm -hmm. and not not and and not just the ones that we have been seeing like you mentioned, like the ones that do like that that allow uh, like um, guaranteed hits and stuff. Uh, yeah, more stuff like this, please. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. It's kind of OP. Oh, I mean, it is. It. It's incredibly OP. <laughs> not only is it a mind game, but it's almost a, a mind game that you can't win. You know. Right, uh, yeah, because I, I did think about that, actually. In both of the examples that we got, Higuruma received, like, actually conclusive evidence, or at least right. information that was correct, I, I guess you could say at the very least, about the case. Yeah, I, I guess in the second trial, the evidence was, well, it, it, he was innocent. So I, I, I guess... Yeah. Judgment can give somewhat false claims. True. So I guess, but mm. I don't know. It does. It does seem like it's gonna. It's just gonna pull out some minor or even major infringement crime, mm. um, right? And accuse you of it. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's already killed like what twenty people who came after him. Uh, right. Or so? I, I believe, yeah, something like yeah. that, yeah. I think. So it seems to be pretty effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, but I will note, those, peop those, those people supposedly attacked him, other than the ones that he killed himself out of his blind fury. Precisely. Uh, but in the calling games, they were people who, they were sorcerers who attacked him, so... Yeah. Self-defense. <laughs> right. I mean, it seems like it, at least. Yeah. But yeah, he did eventually agree to help Yuji add that new rule to the culling game. 
after which he may have exited the story for good, potentially, um, I did <laughs> with the intention of turning himself in for the crimes he committed. Yeah. Uh, like, notably those two, uh, I guess, civilians that he killed. Mm-hmm. I showed off my cool domain expansion. I got on the cover of the volume. Yeah. I'm yeah. gone. Right. See ya. I mean, I I wouldn't be too surprised if that was the case. And if it is, I guess, I'll, honestly, I, I'll be satisfied with this character. Uh, yeah. I thought he had a fun little run, even though he only appeared in two books. For that amount of, of panel time, I thought he was very fun. That said, though, as you mentioned before, I, I do think he could still serve that purpose of helping Yuji further in, I guess, his, his mental struggles. Uh, mm-hmm. If he would stick around, I think he could serve that role, and I think that would be beautiful as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how, how I would feel if he didn't come back. I kind of, I kind of like him, so it, it would be a shame mm. to not see him again. Right. But that being said, we do have a lot of characters. Yeah. Although we did get a lot of characters killed off in Shibuya. That's true. So. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm down for having him again. Absolutely. But anything else on him right now? No. No. Then moving on to Reggie Star. <laughs> the guy that Remy apparently was working for. Uh, and he had some interesting, but in my opinion at least, a little bit confusing things to say regarding Kenjaku. Okay. He he predicts that Kenjaku will drop a bomb of some kind onto the remaining players of the calling game after the, a stalemate has been reached. To serve his purpose or something like that. Yeah, but I didn't quite follow along with his reasonings for thinking so yeah i i don't even know really what it means is, is he is he actually talking about a bomb bomb or is he talking about i don't know a truth bomb like can you go dropping a truth bomb on all, on all these <laughs> <laughs> boom <laughs> wow. i am everybody's mother <laughs> Oh, that that would be funny. Uh, that would be so funny. <laughs> uh, um, no, but I, I get what you mean. It's though. probably not mm. what he was. Probably not what he's saying. But no, it's still mm, like mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. And we Ooh. we see Kenjaku doing his like evil scheming, speaking some language, maybe Chinese. I don't know why they didn't bother translating it. Right. The Chinese people are like, oh, okay, I see what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. I I also assumed it was Chinese, but yeah. Interesting. But anyway, uh, I don't know what he's talking to these people about, but obviously he's cooking something. So I think Reggie ha- has a point indeed to what he's saying. I yeah. just don't exactly know what that entails. Uh, absolutely. And I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't doubt that. I, I just had an issue, I guess, following along with w- understanding exactly why he came to these conclusions. I didn't really understand all of that, but I don't have to. I'm fine not understanding this. <laughs> well, so we do know he's a sorcerer from the past. Right. So maybe he knew... He knows Kenjaku's overall plan? Because, right. because mm. Kenjaku promised to bring him back, and maybe he told the sorcerers, hey, there's going to be this pretty rad calling games, you know, you're going to kill all these people awesome and then the, the best ones oh my gosh the best ones they're gonna get bombed <laughs> like, oh that doesn't sound great no trust me it'll be it'll be awesome <laughs> i i don't know uh, i don't know my goodness yeah. maybe maybe he didn't tell him and he's just <laughs> thinking out loud <laughs> there yeah yeah I, uh, yeah we'll we'll see May, maybe it'll make sense further down the line Mm-hmm. i hope so but I guess Reggie's a fan of Mary Poppins. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Actually, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I did, I did, I did think of Guardians of the Galaxy as well when I saw him <laughs> gliding down the building with the with the umbrella like that, like that. Uh, but yeah, it was very, very cute, almost. But anyway, about his cursed technique, uh, I thought it was kind of interesting in that it allows him to gain whatever is written on a receipt, 
um, that he has, um, mm-hmm. and and not just like the material things that one might think initially, but also like stuff like like feeling instantly refreshed after using up a, a recipe for yeah. or a, a receipt for a spa or something like that. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. But anything more on this guy? That's all I have on Reggie. Then let's move on a bit to Megumi Fushiguro next. This poor guy ended up having to fight with a bunch of weirdos. That's basically <laughs> yeah. his, his time in this volume is just basically that. Uh, it really is. <laughs> but he did kill Chizuru Hari, earning himself five points in the culling game. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that was, I guess, the first first kill for him, or at least in the game. Have we seen him killing before, though? The game? Uh, not that I recall. I don't recall it either. So maybe it was just his first kill altogether. But he he don't care. He just wants to save his sister. Mm-hmm. He has one goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did find it rather interesting to learn about how he carries the weight of whatever is stored within his shadow realm or his shadow domain. Oh. Um, yeah. And that... Because he... Even when he doesn't have his domain expanded... He always has that little pocket shadow dimension where he can store items and stuff, as we've seen. Right. So it's interesting to know how that all, like, that, like it, it, I, I like this explanation as to why he can't just carry anything in there. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, Reggie was able to use that to his benefit against mm. Megumi. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was cool, I thought. Yeah. When he summoned his elephant at the very end there, did the elephant come out of the shadow? So was he somehow carrying the weight of the elephant? Or did he just make the elephant appear just by normal means? That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I, I I usually think that his... Um, I'm losing the word now, but the animals... Shikigami, Shikigami I believe. Shikigami, yeah, thank you. That, that they aren't in his shadow realm normally but that they are uh-huh. somehow he summons them in some other way from from elsewhere or, right. or whatever but you're right that yeah. in, in this instance it does seem like he's implying that the fact that there's shadow above means that i can summon this guy from it or this elephant from it yeah uh, right that, so that's yeah what the hell i don't i don't entirely understand like this was the chapter i was talking about <laughs> when, when i mentioned that I was confused. It, mm. A lot of stuff happens in this fight with Reggie at the end. It's it's cool. I and and I and I have this impression that it's cool, mm. but it's also a lot of explanation, a lot of text, a lot of like, well, this is how it's supposed to be, but it's actually like this, and and then this guy did this, and it's like, mm. oh, well, I guess brain. actually in this case, because they are in his shadow domain at the moment, uh-huh. and so the elephant is coming. Is is entering the shadow domain from elsewhere? I I would oh, say okay. right. It, it's what's happening at the final page here, basically. Okay. So, I guess I could still buy this because I guess maybe it would need shadow to enter the shadow realm or shadow shadow domain, mm-hmm. and that's why it can enter from above. But it didn't enter from the shadow domain because obviously they are already in there. Does that make sense? I think that could make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I activated my domain, uh, but it's incomplete. But, it, but it's still complete. <laughs> but it's incomplete. <laughs> it's incomplete, but it's better than if it was complete. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> no, you're Why? right. You're right. It is a bit strange. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Um, it still was, I, I was, I'll say this, if this is ever animated, it still is going to be pretty cool to see a freaking <laughs> elephant drop on this guy. Oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. Like, that'd be pretty <laughs> awesome. And, and, and the whole fight in general is, is, is a great uh, spectacle, so. Uh-huh. Very. <laughs> uh, very nice. Like that. Very nice indeed. And that's all there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next, let's talk about Fumihiko Takaba. This Joker <laughs> is back, and he's yeah. as unfunny as ever. <laughs> Dude is I, 
unhinged. Mm. What, are you, what are you talking about? He's hilarious. Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing. He does make me laugh a lot. But it's when he's trying <laughs> to be funny. That's when right. he's just the least funny guy in the world, kind of. Uh, but just yeah. his, his, I guess, charisma and just his the way he shines or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. the way he acts and whatnot. His outfit. Like, there's a lot of funny things about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing clothes on only his left side of the body. His right side of the body, basically completely naked. I, I think that's very silly and funny. So, I thought that too, but is it actually just a white and black situation? That's what I thought initially, actually. But then I I feel like it's... I mean, he's wearing gloves and shoes, even on that side of the body. Yeah. But, but I, I believe that's all. And I guess the belt also extends over the, to that side. But... Other than that, I believe he's completely naked. Because they, they even censor it with a little curse thing, like when he's like spreading his legs. Because oh, that's, yeah. I guess, <laughs> an instance where his little dick and balls may show. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Um, And just his like old-timey... Or a kind of high horse way of speaking, or whatever. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but just his demeanor is very fun. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's strange. Like, he, he is one of the wackiest characters we've ever seen in this he is. Uh, <laughs> manga so far. And not just that, he apparently is also very. Very overpowered. Another one of these new sorcerers that is mm. potentially a, a very strong. Right. And we don't really know what his curse technique is, if he, if he, if he even has one. Oh, yeah, that's true. Although I, I do have a guess of what it could be. Oh. I mean, maybe it has something to do with <laughs> the more not funny jokes he tells. The, the stronger he becomes, or you know, if they don't think he's funny, he's able to do massive amount of damage. <laughs> and he, but he doesn't know. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> oh, he's just man. doing it. He's just, just being himself. That would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. So against Yuji, who probably would laugh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> he's yeah. he's weakling. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. But I don't think they would fight. No, nah, no. Nah. Necessarily, unless <laughs> something crazy would happen. Mm. But uh, I was going to ask you, and I, I'm curious about your reaction to when Megumi compares him or thinks of Toto when, when he sees him. How do, how do you feel, how do you feel like, you, about that? You know, I think initially I was a little bit like, hmm, how dare he compare this guy to <laughs> my boy Toto? Yeah. But... <laughs> I mean, I love this guy as well. Like, not as much as I love Toto. Fair. But I think this guy is pretty great. So, you know <laughs> what? I don't mind it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, and they are, both of them are very over-the-top yeah. type funny men without necessarily trying to be funny. Or, or well, well, in, in, in the cases when he, when, when, when Takaba is funny, I don't think he's trying to be funny, basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or, well... <laughs> Actually, it, he's tr- he's trying to be funny, but he's not funny. But that's what's funny, right? I guess that's that it. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, no, I I'm definitely fine with that comparison, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's fun. Like now, now that now that Toto is kind of out of the story for the time being, at the very least, uh-huh. it's fun to have this guy substitute for him. <laughs> For for like for for now at the like and and I mean, you know I I'd like to see this guy stick around I think I think he's that fun. I'm waiting for the moment where he meets Yuji. Yuji is like my comedy friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, dude. Yeah. I would like to see him meet Yuji. See how that would be. Yeah. Totally. At at to Yuji's brother Harem apparently. <laughs> Precisely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let, let's give Yuji a third brother. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I hope we don't see the end of Takaba here, similar to 
the end of Higuruma, you know? Um, Absolutely. I want to see more. And it seems like Takaba, because he does come to rescue Megumi, I, I feel like he could appear at any moment and Ooh. try to help somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To see him just swoop out of nowhere again. Yeah, uh -huh. that would be fun. Something, maybe it was the outfit, but I feel like it's the personality as well. Of this guy it reminded me of a villain in My Hero Academia called, I believe his name is Twice. Do you know him? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. There, there was just something about, I get maybe, maybe it's the combination of the outfit and the personality kind of uh, that felt a little bit similar to that, I thought. Twice is definitely inspired by Deadpool. So you're saying that <laughs> Takaba gives you Deadpool vibes as well? I mean, they're both kind of goofy chaotic in a way while i didn't think about deadpool specifically uh i did think about spider-man and i actually and this is something that spider-man and deadpool have in common in how they are both marvel characters who as they fight they kind of throw in little quips and and comments and stuff in in some uh -huh. entertain, entertaining ways and i think that's something that this character does uh hmm. which I well, it's one of the reasons why I I'm really enjoying him. So yeah, I guess even though I didn't actively think of Deadpool, it's it's something. Yeah, I I can see some similarities there. Yeah. <laughs> but is that all on Fumihiko Takaba? Yeah. Then I don't really have any other characters. Um, what about you? I've got one, just because I'm not so sure if they're dead yet or not. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Remy, the scorpion-haired girl, I believe that's her name. Uh-huh. I, I don't think it's been confirmed that she's dead. I don't think so either. Or, I, yeah, I, I don't feel like there's... At least the points didn't seem like it went anywhere, unless it went to one of the other two guys. I, you know, the Reggie and one of his goons. I, I, mm. I'm not sure. Oh, I, I guess, speaking of the goons, there was that one guy who was throwing his body parts as explosives uh -huh. that was pretty rad yeah uh, right pretty hardcore but he's he's gone now well he he is fighting takaba now like last we saw oh oh he and takaba engaged in in, in combat and i thought takaba had beat him i don't but think I guess not. so um okay i i think last we saw they they kind of went off in one direction while megumi and reggie went in another Okay. So I, for some reason, I thought that that guy would had gotten so upset that he was gonna just explode himself, and then talk about kicked in the way, and then he did it. Oh. But maybe I'm wrong, because Reggie said something about, "Oh, that guy can can be that way, like he gets too." annoyed or something right I yeah he, I, 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 I don't remember, remember his comment exactly either but he said something like the way he said it made it sound like he was pretty sure that Hazanoki the guy exploding body parts guy that he would uh -huh. win basically it's it's he, oh. he, he seemed Reggie seemed pretty sure that his that his guy would defeat Takaba gotcha oh, okay then I misread that misread that part entirely then I I thought he was just like ah what, like he had given up on him and Takaba ran away. But I guess it would make sense for Takaba to go his separate ways, you know. He would have helped Megami take out Reggie mm. if he was done, right? So uh, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but yeah. Uh Remy, I, I I I agree. I believe she's she's around somewhere, just not yeah. presence right now. She was the first one to mention, I believe, that the culling games had been going on for 12 days. Oh, yeah. So that's, I guess it gives context to, you know, how much has been going down in, the, in that time period. Mm. The last thing about Remy is she did her sting thing. Like, she actually stung Megabi at some point. She did, yeah. But nothing really <laughs> happened. And so if Remy's dead, then it, maybe it doesn't mean anything. But I, why have that at all other than give reason for her, her stinger hair? It almost makes you wonder if there's going to be some sort of side effect 
like some sort of poison or something Ooh. Uh, ah. from that sting. O- otherwise, it's like, I mean, I, may, maybe, it, maybe it was for literally no purpose other than to just make us feel bad or, or pity mm-hmm. Remy even more. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I, it could have just been that, but I, I like your idea there, though. Yeah. It would be interesting if there was some sort of consequence. Uh huh. But yeah, I guess we'll see in the next volume. We shall indeed. Do you want to move on to predictions now? I'm ready. All righty. Well, I think Megumi is most likely going to end up victorious in his battle with Reggie. I guess that's like one immediate prediction that's most likely going to be resolved. Mm-hmm. Um, additionally, I think think Fumihiko Takaba is going to win against Hazunoki on his side of things. Yeah. If if my discourse earlier is any indication, I, I think he's already won. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yes, I, I think he I think he will win. <laughs> because we gotta see more of him. He's too fun to get rid of this soon. Yeah. Like way too fun. <laughs> Akatami was cooking when he made this guy and I think Yeah. It'd be a shame if he didn't bring him back for more. I feel like this type of character is something that Akutami pulls off really well. Like with Toto and this guy, mm-hmm. like they are a certain brand of character that, or like the, this, this is the same genre of character or whatever you want to say. Yeah. Uh, and Akutami just does both excellently. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'd say Panda is kind of huh. in that same realm where, <laughs> it's it, just a panda but then and, and and actually quite funny panda but then you know it, mm. panda kicks butt true uh, absolutely yeah <laughs> so yeah <laughs> speaking of panda i feel like next volume is where we're going to get a look at colony one is that colony one's the other is the one that panda's at right now right they're in colony two i think no i think they're in in colony number one now right are they I mean, all, all the chapters are called Tokyo Number One Colony. Oh, are they? Oh, sh- oh you're right. Shoot. Well, I, I, I look stupid. <laughs> so we'll get to see Colony Number Two then. Uh, right, right. I hope so. Because I'm guessing like every everything is resolved, really. In the, well, here's what I'm saying: is that even if Midori, not Midori, <laughs> Megumi, <laughs> and Yuji are still in, in this colony. I feel like the story will take a break and go over to colony number two and see what's going on with them. Mm. Um, because to me, that that's kind of exciting to see what what's happening over there. Absolutely. Yes. And they are, they've already made the rule change. So the, the points and, and Megami's sister, like it's basically resolved uh, in terms of her being in danger. Although, of course, there is the aspect of her being in the Culling Games, but I'll, I'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it's time to move on to Colony 2. And I think we will see Panda uh, will find the angel. Yes. And maybe, due to some sort of fighting, we will finally see Panda's sister. Oh, I, yeah. I, this is one thing I've always been interested to see. Right. Is who the heck is Panda's sister? Is it a walrus? Is it uh, an elephant? You know, what? what is this third sister, third sibling? Right. Yeah, I, I definitely hope so. And I, I agree that I definitely would like to see some of the other characters now because this book did a very good job at showing this colony and these characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, it would be nice to change perspective. That said, I think I... I I would like for just Megumi's current little thing to get resolved, but that would, that wouldn't need more than one chapter. Agreed. But yeah, from there on, yeah, please go elsewhere and show us the rest. Um, but yeah, it, it it does seem like this arc is going to be divided. I I guess sort of the opposite as to what I was, I guess, predicting last time because last time I I I I thought that. The calling game arc would go back and forth a lot between the different colonies and stuff, mm. um, but right now, based on this this volume, I get the feeling that it's the story is gonna basically just take do one colony at a time. 
Mm. Uh, okay, one colony at a time. To, okay. to its more, not necessarily all the way to the end of the story in that colony, but but basically mm-hmm. like all of it. Like maybe they're, they, yeah, they're, they wouldn't leave much kind of left yeah. there. Um, it's what it seems to be to me. Do you think that Yuji and Megumi will meet up and leave for Colony 2? Or are they going to stay in this colony? If they can leave, can they? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the rules are about leaving. Mm. But... Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like, I, 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 guess, I guess I think they would eventually. But I, I don't think there's too... Like, other than resolving Megumi's fight with Reggie, I don't think there's much, like, narratively that needs to be shown remain remaining in this yeah in this colony mm-hmm. so that's why i think most of the rest of the culling game arc will show other locations and other characters yeah and and if it's going to stick to this formula that, that this book did it's probably just going to do like chunks like the next will be maybe colony number two to- to- tokyo two or whatever uh mm-hmm. and maybe then we move on to a different location maybe maybe we'll see one section of chapters with utah perhaps yeah i was gonna say that it would be really nice to see more of utah because it does feel like he came in for a volume or so and now he's gone again (laughs) (laughs) yeah right but i'm pretty adamant that higuruma can't be out of the story yet i just i i feel like he has such an interesting technique Mm. And a character about him that it'd be it it'd be a shame if he left. I mean, I I wouldn't be completely upset, but I, I like him, so I want to see more of him. Yeah. Same with Takaba, and but I'm pretty I'm pretty certain Takaba is not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. I also feel definitely more confident with Takaba that he will stick around. With Hikirima, though, like while I really loved him, and I would be happy to see him again. As I said before, like I'm, I'm still content. I think with what he gave us as, as a character, like the role he served, kind of in the story. Okay. If this is all it was, I think was was quite nice. And here's another thing: for both these characters, they're almost too strong to be forgotten. Oh yeah. To just <laughs> go away, like hmm. I, I, that seems pretty valuable to have these strong the sorcerers. But then not use them at all? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't seem right, but who knows? It's not going to be the end of the world if they don't show up, but it would be cool to have them. Yeah. Oh, now, now, actually, the more I'm thinking about Higuruma, I kind of almost am leaning like even more strongly toward the fact that I kind of think he should turn himself in and exit the story permanently oh yeah (laughs) because i think that would be kind of i don't know poetically or whatever uh kind of beautiful the fact that he i mean he is a man of the law and like Mm -hmm. justice and everything and he he did kill people and for him to turn himself in and exit the story that way i think i think would be befitting of this character well you know you can you could do that after the culling games are over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's... There's time. I suppose so, I suppose so. <laughs> Why not add on to your sins? No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Live a little. Right, yeah. He's already tainted. Why not taint yourself some more? <laughs> uh, that's not a great mindset. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, uh, <clears throat> any any other predictions? Uh, you have? No, I think I'm all done, actually. Okay, I... Lastly, it's about Megumi's sister. Could there be some sort of encounter with her? Mm. Like, is she in the Kali games right now? Mm. Because uh, we see her opening her eyes in some in a previous volume, right? Yeah. So, I almost feel like it'd be a waste if we don't see her in the Kali games. Maybe even kind of losing control as a source. Well, maybe not losing control, but. Maybe doing some sketchy stuff as a, as right. a sorcerer. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I think it'd be interesting to see a confrontation between her and Megumi, and maybe Megumi trying to snap 
some sense into her. Oh, yeah. Or maybe she's possessed by a former or previous sorcerer. I'm not exactly sure how right. that works still. I mean, because I don't know either, but that's kind of mostly what I've been thinking that she is. Kind of the mm-hmm. situation that she's in, because she has... Obviously, she's been cursed for a long time, and it seemed like the implication may have been when Kenjaku revealed himself and his stuff that that maybe that's what she had been set up for this whole time to to for mm-hmm. for a source of, of the past to reawaken in her body. Of course, we don't know for sure, but and and I, and really that that's kind of the worst case scenario kind of thing because who knows? Yeah, what that implies for her like would she be lost completely i don't in yeah, that no case idea. that would be so sad for megumi yeah was all this for nothing <laughs> right precisely oh that would suck uh knowing akatami i i wouldn't put it past him <laughs> no, no wouldn't put it past him <laughs> that's all i have for mm. predictions cool yeah i'm i'm excited to continue this arc into the next volume now even though yeah yeah i don't know yeah like it's not as this one wasn't as exciting in terms of lore or story really um it was just for the most part pure fighting (laughs) yeah right Uh, i mean there was a lot of words obviously but a lot of explanation (laughs) (laughs) i'm hoping that well, I mean, I'm not confident that we'll get that, but I'm hoping eventually we'll get more story drops in the next volume. Right. And I feel like as as soon as we learn more about Megumi's sister, and once we actually get to see her in the story properly, uh-huh. that should make us feel like the story is moving forward more. Uh, maybe more, at least compared to this volume. Mm-hmm. So that's honestly, yeah. Even though I didn't have bring up any predictions regarding her, I do feel quite strongly that <laughs> her introduction or whatever you want to say, like once we get to see her, that that should make things a lot more exciting. I believe. Yeah, I can agree with that. But yeah, I suppose that's all for now. Mm-hmm. Very well, then. Dear listeners, if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by rating our show on the podcast platforms and subscribing to our channel, Umami Manga, on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 20. Bye-bye! See you later! You are my special.